In part one, we looked at award-winning engines that wowed the world, only to leave some owners with costly regrets. Well, the list doesn't stop there. In this follow-up episode, we're diving into five more engines that earned high praise and industry awards, but later revealed serious reliability issues. From European turbocharged marvels to American V6 powerhouses, these engines prove that even the most celebrated designs can come with a hidden price. Number 6. BMW PSA Prince 1.6 Turbo Engine In 2006, the BMW PSA Prince 1.6 Turbo Engine made its debut, a joint venture between BMW and Peugeot Citroën, initially powering the Mini Cooper S and later finding its way into a variety of Peugeot and Citroën models. The new engine introduced turbocharging to a small displacement 1.6-liter engine, marking a significant leap forward in performance while maintaining good fuel efficiency, especially at lower RPMs. The Prince engine came with an open-deck aluminum alloy engine block, a dual overhead cam 16 valve configuration, and variable valve timing for both intake and exhaust valves, helping to improve fuel efficiency and performance. It featured turbocharging, direct injection, and used a steel exhaust manifold integrated with the cylinder head for better turbo response. This engine was awarded numerous accolades, including being named to the Ward's 10 Best Engines list and winning Engine of the Year awards in various categories. It stood out for combining turbocharged performance in a small displacement package with solid fuel economy, making it a strong contender in the competitive small engine category. However, while the engine was successful in many ways, it developed several reliability concerns over time. One of the most common problems was timing chain issues. Owners reported premature stretching of the timing chain, which could cause engine misfires, rough running, and even serious internal damage if left unaddressed. This issue was especially prevalent in early versions of the engine, though it was largely corrected with updates to the timing chain design in later models. Another issue was turbocharger failure, which was occasionally caused by oil starvation or contamination due to inadequate maintenance, especially in cars that weren't driven regularly at higher RPMs. Additionally, some owners experienced high oil consumption, which is not uncommon in turbocharged engines. The engine also faced some cooling problems, particularly in early models, where inadequate cooling could lead to overheating and engine misfires. This issue was partially addressed through recalls and service bulletins from both PSA and BMW. Number 7. FCA 1.4 Mutier Engine In 2009, Fiat introduced the 1.4-liter multi-air turbo engine, developed by Fiat Powertrain Technologies. The new engine was built as a modern, cleaner, and more efficient evolution over Fiat's earlier naturally aspirated and turbocharged 1.4-liter fire engines. At a time when environmental regulations were tightening across Europe, Fiat sought to achieve major improvements in fuel economy and emissions without sacrificing performance. The key advancement was Fiat's multi-air technology, a groundbreaking system that allowed direct control of intake air on a cylinder-by-cylinder -cylinder and stroke-by-stroke -stroke basis, without the need for a traditional throttle body. Instead of controlling air with a butterfly valve, the engine used an electrohydraulic system to vary valve lift and timing precisely in real time. This significantly reduced pumping losses, improved throttle response, and led to lower fuel consumption and reduced CO2 emissions. It was a major leap forward in variable valve timing technology. The engine featured 1.4 liter displacement for cylinders in an inline configuration, direct injection, and was turbocharged. It used a DOHC valve train with 16 valves, and the innovative multi-air system controlled intake valve timing dynamically. The cylinder head was made of aluminum for weight savings, while the block was cast iron to maintain durability. Fiat's bold approach paid off when the 1.4-liter multi-air turbo won the prestigious International Engine of the Year Award in 2010 in the 1.0 to 1.4-liter category. It was celebrated for offering strong performance, impressive fuel economy, and emissions levels that met or exceeded emerging Euro 5 standards. The group had previously won in the same category back in 2005, but the 2010 multi-air victory highlighted a major technological evolution. This engine found its way into a broad range of Fiat Group vehicles, including the Fiat Punto Evo, Fiat 500 Abarth, Alfa Romeo Mito, Alfa Romeo Giulietta, and even certain versions of the Jeep Renegade and Fiat 500X. 
It was also offered in various power outputs, depending on the application. However, as time went on, owners began to experience significant reliability issues. A key weak point was the multi-air unit itself. Being an electrohydraulic system, it was sensitive to oil quality and maintenance practices. If oil changes were skipped or if the wrong oil was used, the unit could clog or fail, leading to loss of power, rough running, and expensive repairs. Replacement of the multi-air unit was often the only solution, and it was neither cheap nor simple. Additionally, turbocharger problems were relatively common. These included issues like wastegate failures, boost leaks, and full turbo failures, often occurring well before high mileage. Despite its early accolades and technical sophistication, the Fiat 1.4-liter multi-air turbo serves as another example of how pushing technological boundaries sometimes led to real-world durability concerns. It delivered impressive performance and efficiency when new, but for many owners, maintenance costs and unexpected failures overshadowed the engine's initial promise. Number 8. GM 3.6-liter LGX V6 The GM 3.6-liter LGX V6 debuted in 2016, marking a new chapter in General Motors' high-feature V6 engine family. It was first introduced in the Cadillac ATS, CTS, and CT6 sedans. This engine replaced earlier variants of GM's 3.6-liter V6, such as the LLT and LFX, with notable changes aimed at improving performance, efficiency, and refinement, all in line with Cadillac's push to compete with German luxury brands. Compared to its predecessors, the LGX brought significant technological advancements. Most notably, it featured direct fuel injection, continuously variable valve timing on both intake and exhaust cams, and was built with dual overhead camshafts and 24 valves. The engine's block and cylinder head are both made of aluminum, keeping weight down. Unlike turbocharged rivals, the LGX remained naturally aspirated, aiming for linear throttle response and smooth power delivery. It also introduced a new combustion system, optimized for better thermal efficiency, and used an integrated exhaust manifold cast into the cylinder heads, reducing warm-up times and emissions. These upgrades didn't go unnoticed. In 2016, the LGX was named towards 10 best engines list, praised for its impressive horsepower, refined operation, and broad torque curve. Reviewers highlighted its ability to deliver performance without relying on forced induction, offering a naturally aspirated alternative in a turbo-dominated segment. The LGX has been widely used across GM's model range. Aside from its launch Cadillacs, it powered several Chevrolet models such as the Camaro, Impala, and Blazer, as well as GMC vehicles like the Acadia. It also found its way into the Buick LaCrosse and Cadillac XT5, becoming one of GM's most versatile V6 offerings across sedans, crossovers, and SUVs. However, while the LGX earned early praise, real-world ownership revealed persistent reliability concerns that tarnished its reputation. One of the most notable issues was timing chain stretch, a problem that also plagued its predecessors. Over time, the chains would elongate, causing engine misfires, poor performance, and in some cases, catastrophic failure if the chain jumped timing. The LGX was prone to poor crankcase ventilation, which led to excessive oil consumption and, in extreme cases, the formation of engine sludge. In addition, many LGX owners reported leaky water pumps, often appearing as early as 60,000 to 80,000 miles. Number 9. Peugeot 1.2 PureTech The Peugeot 1.2 PureTech engine made its debut in 2012, first appearing in the early Peugeot 208. Designed to replace Peugeot's older four-cylinder engines, the motivation behind its development was the need for better fuel economy and lower emissions without compromising power. By downsizing to three cylinders and integrating turbocharging with direct injection, the 1.2 PureTech promised to cut fuel consumption and CO2 emissions by up to 25% compared to a similarly powered four-cylinder engine. The exhaust manifold was integrated into the cylinder head, helping with faster warm-up and reduced emissions. A diamond-like carbon DLC coating on piston rings, gudgeon pins, and tappets, along with a controlled oil pump, aimed to reduce internal friction and precisely regulate lubrication. The engine also debuted with a wet timing belt setup running in oil for quieter operation and reduced friction, though this design would later become one of its most controversial elements. Offered in 1.2-liter displacement, this inline three-cylinder engine utilized direct fuel injection, 
was available in both naturally aspirated and turbocharged versions and featured 12 valves with DOHC configuration. Variable valve timing, VVT, was applied and the engine employed an aluminum alloy block and head to reduce weight and improve thermal efficiency. The 1.2 PureTech found widespread use across much of the Stellantis lineup, powering vehicles such as the Peugeot 208, 308, 3008, and 5008, as well as Citroën C3 and C4, the DS3 and DS7 Crossback, and even Opel models like the Corsa and Crossland and Jeep's entry-level Avenger. In 2015, the engine was awarded the International Engine of the Year in the 1.0 to 1.4 liter category. Judges praised its lively performance, refined character, and impressive fuel efficiency for its size. But over time, the engine's reputation began to unravel. Chief among its issues was the wet timing belt. While initially marketed as a durability and refinement upgrade, it tended to degrade far more quickly than expected. Immersed in engine oil, the belt material could absorb contaminants, especially unburned fuel that slipped past the piston rings and mixed into the oil. This led to the belt shedding rubber particles, which clogged the oil pickup strainer in the sump and disrupted oil flow. Adding to the woes were turbocharger failures, injector problems, and high oil consumption, which was often linked to worn piston rings and a faulty PCV valve. Together, these issues painted a picture of a promising engine platform compromised by long-term reliability concerns. While the issue was largely mitigated in later iterations, especially with the switch to a timing chain in the third-generation PureTech in 2023, earlier owners were left grappling with unexpected costs and reliability issues that tarnished the engine's once-awarded image.